Greetings, everyone. I'm Gina Marie, your favorite curvy vegan from veganwithcurves.com. Welcome back to my channel. Now, if you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you are not new here and you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? <laughs> hit that subscribe button and also hit that notification bell so when I upload new videos, you do not miss them. For today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make sea moss gel using the genus Gracilaria. Now everybody and their mama is selling sea moss, okay? <laughs> and I wanna make a disclaimer that I do not sell sea moss, but I have been using multiple genesis of this seaweed since around 2012 when I first went vegan. So no, I do not claim to be an expert on sea moss, but I know a thing or two. Now, I wrote multiple well-researched articles, uh, one back in 2018, another one last year in 2020, describing the different types of genesis of sea moss and also its nutritional benefits and how to turn it into a gel. And it wasn't until 2020 until those articles started to take off. And look guys, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for all the feedback and comments that I received. I'm glad you find these articles uh, very educational and helpful so that you can be well-educated, a well-informed consumer, particularly in this booming <laughs> CMOS market that we have today. And if you haven't read those articles yet, they are on my website, veganrecurves.com. I highly recommend you check them out if you want more education about CMOS. I will put the link to those articles below in the description box, so make sure you check those out. So without further ado, let's get the gel in. Oh, that was corny. Let's just make some CMOS gel. <laughs> okay, so here is our Gracilaria CMOS. We're going to remove it from the bag and Gracilaria typically has a light sea smell to it, but don't be alarmed, it is not spoiled, okay? Remember, this comes from the ocean, so you should expect it to have some type of ocean sea-like smell to it. So we're gonna measure about one cup of sea moss. Now, I typically do not measure my sea moss, but for demonstration purposes, I'm doing so in this video so that you can see how much it expands once we start to rinse it and soak it and how much gel it can actually yield from just one cup of dried sea moss. Okay, the first step is to clean our Gracilaria and you want to do this with filtered or spring water. Do not use tap, okay? So grab a bowl and pour in some room temperature or cool water. Do not use warm, do not use hot. Otherwise, when you start to clean it, it will start to gel. And it doesn't have to be a lot of water, just enough added in the bowl to clean off your sea moss. So you begin by cleaning your moss by rubbing against a strand and the water. Now, as you continue to do this, you will notice that the water begins to get kind of murky and dirty looking. That's just an indicator that you're cleaning your moss properly. So kudos to you. <laughs> so after you feel confident that you thoroughly clean your moss, you will want to remove it from the dirty water until all your moss is removed and then discard the dirty water. Now you can go back in for a second time and clean it again just to make sure. But typically Gracilaria is not as dirty as other genesis I have worked with like Conjures Christmas. <laughs> so you usually, you know, one deep cleaning is enough. But if you want to make sure, you can do this a second time and you will notice that the water is not as dirty. Again, another indicator that you've cleaned it thoroughly the first time around. So just with the cleaning, you can already see that it is starting to hydrate and get translucent and expand. Now this is before we even soak it and you can already see that it doesn't even fit neatly in our cups as it did when we were measuring it when it was dry. So it's already starting to expand and as we go on to soak it, it will become even more expansive and translucent. Now on to the second step of soaking our sea moss and I'm going to soak this in three limes to kind of neutralize the smell a bit. So I'm cutting these into four wedges. And then I squeeze some of the lime juice in the water. And afterwards, I just throw the entire quartered lime wedge in there. Now this is optional. Typically, I do not soak Gracilaria with limes as the smell is not as strong like with Conjures Crispus. 
but again for purposes of this video i wanted to do so because you might be new to sea moss and the smell as light as it is to me it might be offensive to you so this is a way to kind of calm that down a bit so we're going to soak this for about two hours we are just looking to fully hydrate and expand our sea moss and with the limes to neutralize the smell you can soak this for up to 24 hours, but I wouldn't go any longer than that because if you do, it will start to dissolve in the water and you don't want that. The water will become very gelatinous. So up to one day, 24 hours is more than enough. Okay, once time has elapsed, remove hydrated sea moss from water and look how much our sea moss has expanded. So just for fun, let's go back to our measuring cup and you can clearly see that it is now fully hydrated. It has expanded. It doesn't even fit into our one measuring cup anymore, not even if I try to press it down. So if I transfer this to an additional larger uh, measuring uh, cup, you can see that it has expanded four times its original size. So one cup of dried packed sea moss has expanded to four cups of sea moss once it's clean and once it has been soaked. Now, as far as the leftover water and limes are concerned, you can discard the limes and reserve the water and use it to blend your sea moss. However, I personally discard it because I like my sea moss to have a neutral taste as I use it in various of dishes like savory and sweet. So I don't want a lime flavor in my sea moss gel, but it really is up to you. Okay, the third step is to make our sea moss gel and I'm doing the blender method. So no heat, no cooking. This is just my personal preference. So now we're going to see how much sea moss gel can be actually yield from our hydrated sea moss. Now this depends on whether you want your sea moss to be more liquid or more solid. And that depends on how much water you're going to be using when blending your sea moss. To demonstrate this, I will split my hydrated soaked sea moss in half. So the first two cups of hydrated sea moss, I'm only going to add one cup of water for a two to one ratio, and this will give me a thicker gel. And the other two cups of hydrated sea moss, I'm going to add two cups of water for a one to one ratio, and this will give me a thinner gel. So with the thicker gel, we're going to add in one cup of water first, and then two cups of sea moss to a high speed blender and blend until smooth. Once it is done blending, you can see how thick, milky, and creamy it is. And we're going to pour this in our measuring cup just to see how much gel it actually made. As you can see, it is thick. I have to scoop it out of my blender because it's not pourable. So after we scoop it all out, you will see that it makes about a cup and a half, uh, about 12 ounces of sea moss gel with that amount of water. So with the thinner batch, we're going to blend two cups of water, adding that to the blender first, followed by our two cups of hydrated sea moss and blend until smooth. And once that's done, you can already see the difference of how much more liquefied it is. So we're going to also pour that into our measuring cup to see how much gel it makes. So you can see that this one is a makes a lot more gel. It's a little over two cups, maybe like two and one fourth cups of gel. It's very liquidy, it's very pourable, and you can kind of see the difference between the two. So again, it all depends on what type of gel you want. Do you want it thicker? Do you want it more liquidy? It's a personal preference. Okay, so now that we have our sea moss made, we're going to store them in glass containers to be placed in the refrigerator. And I'm putting the thick and thinner batches in separate jars, again, for demonstration purposes of this video. So you can see the results of how they look once they um, refrigerate overnight and how well they firm up. So for the thicker batch, I am using a homemade sprout lid for no other purposes than to just differentiate between the two batches. But it is said that sometimes when you put a breathable lid on your sea moss, it lasts longer. Now, honestly, I do not find this to be true with this genus of sea moss, but I do find it to be true with Chondrus crispus. And this is just simple to make. 
the sprout lid i just bought a cheap plastic um, mesh sheet from the craft store grabbed the marker and outlined a circle and cut it out and voila i have a sprout lid it's very cheap and easy to make and for the thinner batch i'm just going to cover it with a regular lid again for the purposes of differentiation between the two batches typically this will last in the refrigerator for about three to four weeks give or take and once we store them in the refrigerator overnight giving them more time to gel you can see that the thicker one is still you know it's still more pliable it still has a you know liquidity to it but um, it's still it's more smooth it's more solid and if you want an even firmer CMOS gel the kind that you know you can mold and it holds its shape on its own you will use even less water now the thinner one um, has ended up gelling a bit but again it's, it's much more lighter it's much more pliable it's much more liquidy um, it doesn't even have like a really deep golden color it almost has the texture of like applesauce another way to store your CMOS gel even longer is to freeze it as ice cubes and if you watched my what I eat in a day video you saw me use these ice cubes in my smoothies and so I bought this cute little pop-up silicone ice cube tray from Amazon and I love it because once you you know freeze anything um, it's so easy for you to release the ice cubes you just press up on the bottom and the ice cubes kind of pop right out so you just fill your ice cube trays up with the CMOS gel, you cover it and you freeze it overnight. And once they are frozen, this is what they look like. And you now have Gracilaria uh, CMOS ice cubes. And that concludes our CMOS gel tutorial. And that's it. I hope this video tutorial was extremely helpful for you. Now, again, if you want to know more about CMOS in general, whether it's Gracilaria or Conjus Crispus, be sure to check out the links below in the description box. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave your comments and questions below. If you didn't like this video, you can give it a thumbs down. I'm not going to hold your hostage and make you give me a thumbs up. But just make sure that you're respectful in the comment section. That's all I ever asked. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace and blessings.